We're in Montpelier, Vermont. We are at a, a new apartment. We're at a downtown apartment. Um, we're gonna be here for a couple of weeks until we move back to Chittenden. Uh, our old place got really moldy, extremely moldy. We lost a bunch of our stuff because of it. Lost a bunch of our stuff because of it. The carpet in our bedroom was a, a little damp. So I, I pulled it up to look underneath and I noticed that just the, the floor was just covered with this like spongy green mold. And as soon as that happened, we just knew we had to get out of there. So we did what we could with the bedroom that we felt safe for um, and just went to live in a hotel for a couple of days. You know, it's, it's funny because a, a couple of weeks ago, I was thinking about how we have too much stuff and how we need to get rid of a lot of our personal belongings. And now the mold's sort of taking care of that for me. But and it's weird because I don't have any decision in the matter. I don't get to choose what gets moldy, but I don't know. Who's to say I would have ever gotten rid of the stuff I needed to get rid of without it? I think something that won't really be captured on video that much is the smell of how this place is after downtown. It's not quite mud, it's not quite like rust or shit, but it feels like if, if mud had like a metallic smell to it, you know, it's like water, dirty water that has flowed through the city and picked up every piece of trash and just, it's... It smells awful, and the mud just gets everywhere, too. I can't walk anywhere without getting it in my apartment. There's dozens of people outside, and it's kind of a, it's, it's a neat blend of people. I think most of the people outside are people working, people who are volunteers, people who are trying to rebuild the city. Um, but there's also just a big chunk of people who are just biking around and going for runs and going jogging. And it's, it's weird to me. It's just like they're trying to treat the city like it was. Like, the city's not like that anymore. If you're going to jog somewhere, don't come downtown. For your own health, too. It's like, who knows what the f*** you're breathing in. Like, there's so much, so much dust in the air that's just so bad for you. I'm not walking outside without a mask anymore at this point. I'm not... I'm not doing it. Uh, I think breathing this stuff in has not been good for me. I think it's been, uh, I've had headaches. I've had just fatigue. And I don't know if I'm just freaking myself out about it, but I felt just like sick in general a little bit. And I don't know if that's from living here or just from having to move so much recently or being around the mold so much. But yeah, I, I see a lot of people just working outside with no protective stuff on, and I'm just like, I worry for them. I, I, I feel like there's some, gonna be some illnesses popping up in the next couple of years that people aren't anticipating.
Okay, my name is Mick, M-I-C-K, like Mick Jagger. <laughs> and um, I live in Northfield, but this group that I'm with sent food and donations up all the way from Tennessee. And uh, it's the Church of Christ. We do care about people. And I've had some good and some sad experiences here. And, and one of them is a story of a lady whose birthday is one month from mine. She's 66 years old. She lost her car. So she went to rent a car. She rented a car, came back, and her apartment was condemned. And she's terrified, but she's sleeping in a rented car. And she's terrified to be on the streets alone. And it just breaks my heart. And all she took was just a couple of little things that would help her through that night. And so, um, and then we have other people that come and take a whole lot when you, you're pretty sure they don't need it all. But um, we're here to help people, so that's what we're doing. Um, had young people here that are homeless uh, just ready to give up and then there's others that say I've been through a lot and I'm gonna go through a lot but I'm gonna make it they have that determination and that's great and so I guess that's my story Um, we have food boxes, we have personal care boxes, although they're, they're going away quickly. Um, bleach, we have laundry detergent, which has been going very well. We have a lot of bottled water, probably another 100 cases um, of bottled water, which people have been coming to get, which really makes me feel good because it's got to be scary drinking this water after a flood. Um, one lady came down and said she turns on her tap water and it's all brown and she doesn't want to drink it. And I said, that's why we have this bottled water. Take as much as you'd like. Um, and so I wouldn't want to do my laundry in that water. But with this laundry detergent, they feel a little bit safer because you can pre-soak it and then you can wash it. And it works good. So um, I, some of them have come back said thank you. And that worked really great and gotten more, which is good. Um, just... You know, there's, the street is lined, not today, but like Monday through Saturday, they were down here with cooking and, and giving people food on their money. It, it didn't cost us anything. Al's French Fries is set up up by the fire department. They're giving away fries and, and hot dogs and hamburgers and all that. So please, when you're in Burlington, visit Al's French Fries and help them out because they help people down here. Um, places like that all through this place. There's volunteers that work so hard, they'll fill up trucks of this bottled water in these food boxes and they're heavy and they just don't even break a sweat, they just do it. And they're amazing. One of them, I'd like to mention her name is Josie and she is just incredible. She kind of helps keep everybody in line here and, and tell them what we're gonna do, but she doesn't just stand there and do it. She talks to them and she also lugs the heaviest things you can lug around here. She's an amazing young lady. And there's so many people like that, and it's just just so nice. I mean, it's just nice, and it makes you feel good to be able to help people. That probably sounds cliche, but it's the truth. Yes, I've been, this is my eighth day. So, yep, and I try to get here around 9 and leave between 4 and 5, and... Um, I've only got a little Miata, so I can't carry a lot of stuff for people, but I have brought people some things and, and all that in it. And again, I, there's just so many sad stories, what people have lost and, you know, collections they've had for 50 years, things like that. Um, uh, you know, you finally get ahead a little bit, so you buy yourself a, a Ethan Allen table at five or $800, and then it's gone. It's, you have to throw it away, those feelings of despair but yet they'll come down and volunteer and sort clothes like they're doing here. They'll come down and they'll just help other people. It's just amazing. So, you know, there's a story in every person here. Yeah. It's really nice to go to the water line, a little bit higher, make sure whatever. 
seeping up the and drying out. Was it really clear where the water line was when you guys well, came back? There are two places in the video. You can see it on the front door. We taped it off with a definitely dirty line. Oh, yeah. And then my favorite <clears throat> was there we have a kind of drum stage. There was a plexiglass thing that goes around the drum set and had a clear line like a <laughs> dirt around the drum set. We discovered there was a door. We pulled some wall out of the door there, so we put little mirrors in there and like kind of trim it out and stuff fun with it. Wonderful, yeah. Discovering new things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's fun. Yeah. Well, we've got the artistic minds that go a little <laughs> crazy, so we just want to go with whatever. We have an idea for the lower walls, which I can't tell you yet. Just come in and see. Sure. <laughs> it should be fun if you know this. Also, it's like a little piece of fish. We can use it. Yeah. I saw. I have a thing or two I'm thinking about hiding in the wall. Spot holes, a plastic foot top of the mannequin from when the stores and maybe cost in the wall and then put it up. Don't be in there for someone to find. Maybe, maybe a dollar. There was a dollar I found, so I put that back in there. Yeah. This is really something. I can see the bathroom on the other side. I know. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> so. oh. <laughs> Yeah, I was joking with the guys, like, hey, you can't use that, we have an upstairs bathroom, so I'm not using that. I'm like, what? Oh, okay, now I don't know why, because it's not very private.